Good evening, friends, and welcome to another week of Missions Monday. Here we are on Monday talking about missions. Uh, we've been talking about reaching our Jerusalem last week. This week we're talking about reaching our Judea. What exactly is my Judea and how do I reach my Judea? We'll be talking about that today on, on Restream. We have Pastor Gordon Colby from Turner, Maine, and we'll be talking about how to reach my Judea. And also in the middle of this Passion Week, we're going to also invite you down to 6025 Moravia Park Drive, Baltimore, Maryland for our Easter play. We'd love to have you. We'll have productions here on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 2 p.m. So come on down and enjoy the Easter play during the Passion Week. But Pastor Gordon, we have a passion for reaching our Judea today. So we do. Start off with a, a, a devotional thought about that. Oh, well. Thank you for having me. Uh, I, I must tell you, we just went through 20 inches of snow here. Uh, wow. Saturday. So I'm looking at snow banks everywhere. Wow. But, uh, but I suppose everybody has problems some, everywhere. But uh, let's turn to, uh, in, the, in God's word, to John 11. I want to talk about Jesus going to Judea. Uh, I thought that would be a good example to start with. Uh, John 11, and, uh, in verse 1, it says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister said unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, he saith to the disciples, let us go to Judea, Judea again. So I just, as we just look at those few verses there, I think the first question that came comes to my mind is uh, why, why did Jesus go to Judea? Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, he had friends there. He went there because he had compassion towards his friends, towards people that he knew. And I think that that's the first thing about our Judea is that we need to think about we need to think about the people that the, that are there. We need to pray earnestly for the people that are there and have compassion. Uh, we don't just we don't just decide to go to build a bigger church. We don't just decide to go because because it's it would be something good, but we go because we have compassion for the people that are there. But I think the key thing here is that that Jesus went because uh, that, that that his father that God might be glorified. And that should be our motive. Our motive should be that God would be glorified, and that we. And then our our, our thought is that we would have compassion, or our heart is that we would have compassion to those that are there. And then, then the, the other thing that it says is that he waited two days. So Jesus didn't just immediately get the idea. I'm going to Judea, and and go. He waited upon God. He waited very carefully, very quietly, and and then waited for God to give him the go-ahead, for the Father to give him the go-ahead to go. And I think that's important in our Judea, too. I think it's easy for us to, to come up with a plan and say, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go do it. But we need to wait for God's timing. In this case, had Jesus gone early, uh, Lazarus would, would, have, would have only been sick. He wouldn't have died yet. And Jesus needed... Uh, for God to be glorified, Jesus needed uh, Lazarus to be dead and in the grave so that he could be uh, resurrected. Mm. So, so timing, timing is so very important. And then, then he said in, in verse eight, it says, "His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again?" So he, they said, there, "There's trouble." There's trouble in Judea. Judea is not a safe place for you. Are you sure you want to go there? 
Uh, and I think that when we when we look at at uh, going to Judea, we have to recognize that there will be there will be issues. It won't be easy. One of the one of the places that we go at, in uh, Lewiston, Maine, is a place they call it the 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 uh, the tree street the tree streets area. The tree streets being Pine Street, Ash Street. Uh, Birch Street, and so on and so forth. But it's an area that uh, I even have heard some of the people in my church say, I don't know if I really want to go there. I don't know if that's a safe area. But you know what? God's called us there. And he has a provision for us there. And so I think this is the same thing. God, Jesus knew that he was supposed to go. The disciples questioned, is, do you think it's really right? Uh, we, we, may, we may suffer harm there. But Jesus knew that God had a plan. And so as we look, he, Jesus answered and said, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may, may awake him out of sleep. Then says his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent that ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. And I think this is the, the most amazing thing uh, is that when we go at the right time, when we go trusting God, when we go uh, because of compassion for the people that are there, uh, when we do all of those things and we get there and then God does something amazing. And when God does something amazing, it's like it all just comes together and we just say, wow, I can't believe what's going on in Lewiston, Maine. I can't believe what's going on in Rumford, Maine. I just can't believe what God's doing in these different places. Hmm. And, and, and as that happens, then it's just it's such a it's such a sweet savor really it's such a it's such a blessing to receive uh, at, when we're when we're in this place so that's just my my thoughts there about Jesus going to Judea and I work all to go to Judea I like it that's a great thought Pastor thank you so much uh, I you really kind of made some great points there that I want to talk a little deeper about and amplify a little bit but. Let me ask you this question, because a lot of times when we hear Jerusalem, all of us know what our Jerusalem is. Where we are is our Jerusalem. That could be the neighborhood I'm in. That could be the area of town that I'm in. That could be the town that I am. But when we speak about our Judea, in your words, what do you think we're talking about? I think for us, I think our Judea is the towns that surround. Uh, we're in Turner. Turner's okay. a valley. You know, it's a fairly, uh, geographically, it's a fairly large little town in Maine. Uh, Population-wise, it's small. But we're surrounded by by several small towns, and then Lewis and Auburn, which is a bigger bigger towns. And so that's our Judea is the, the towns that surround us. Okay. That's a good answer. I, I like that. I, I like the idea that, okay, I can be concerned about my own little place where I'm at. But my Judea is someone that's outside of maybe eyesight. There's someone that's outside of maybe where I do my living. But be, I would say beyond my living, mm -hmm. if I can be honest, beyond my living. Like Christ never went more than 200 kilometers from where he was born. But he went further beyond his living than where he was born in Nazareth. And he got into other places like he gets into here, Bethany, different places. He gets further out. And it's, I think it's about expanding my coast. And like you said, I love your two words there, that my motivation is compassion, but the, my operation is the Holy Spirit. I want to be motivated by love, but if I'm not careful, I'm motivated by love without direction in my Judea. But I, I want to be led by God. That's the timing. That's the direction, that's the approach, um, that's the operation, that's the quality or the type of ministry, all those things, the spirit guides us. But I like the motivation of love. 
I can't say in Ephesians 5, 2, that I'm walking in love if I'm not motivated beyond where I see. I, love takes me beyond my footsteps. Love takes me beyond what I see. Love takes me further. I think God's love can take me further. Um, I love how you said that about having the motivation like Christ had the motivation to go beyond where he could where he could think and where he could serve and where he could see beyond his Nazareth. Um, a lot of us don't think about our Judeas, Pastor Colby. A lot of us think about our Jerusalem. We use our resources for our Jerusalem. And once in a while, we think about the outermost parts. But many of us don't have a heart for our Judea. And frankly, I think this is how you take back territories from the devil. And this is how you spread the gospel is you have to have a vision beyond where your feet trod. You know, and, and maybe you say, well, we're not called to go to Guatemala or called to go to Uganda. Yeah, but right next door, right next door mm -hmm. is, in your case, is um, Lewiston, Auburn. Right next door, you could say right next door, sort of, you could say uh, Portland's not far. Um, you could say uh, Oxford's not far. You could say Rumford's not that far. All those are, they're, they're inside your Judea a little bit. So it's great to have that kind of quantify it because sometimes we speak and we say, okay, what does that look like? Is that, how far away is that? Okay, it's, it's not that far, but it's farther than I do my living. You follow me? It's farther than I do my living. And I like the way you, you kind of implied that we have to have a vision for it. There's gotta be a vision. Um, uh, where does that vision start? Where all visions start, a burden, mm -hmm. right? And you mentioned about the love of God and compassion. I think God puts people in our hearts. God puts places in our hearts. Uh, he puts towns in our hearts. He even puts people groups in our hearts. Um, areas and sections beyond where we live, he puts that in our heart. And that love begins to give us a burden for a location or burden for a certain area. And then we feed that with faith. And when we feed that, that, that burden with faith, God can give us a vision. Like God has given you a vision for, let's see, you, you mentioned Lewiston, right? Yes. And he's also given you a, a vision for Rumford, right? Yes. Which is, I think, amazing because your church is not some mega church. It's a decent sized church. But to have visions for two different towns outside of your town, even though you say they're small towns, nevertheless, they're completely different living communities. At the same time, to be have a heart for that is incredible. It's really, it's really compassionate. It's really amazing. Um, I, I think when you, you, you re, number one, you have to recognize what your Judea is. And then you have to go to God and ask God, God, give me a heart for my Judea. God, give me a burden for my Judea. Give me direction in my Judea. How can I operate? How can I do this? How does this all work? Well, it starts with a burden. It starts, it starts with a vision. And then God gives me a vision as the man of God for my Judea, wherever that may be. And then in the church, in the team, um, I, even in my own family, I have to share, I, I write the vision and I make it plain. Um, me, Pastor Gordon, you can give us some tips about how you did that in Turner. How did you, in your team, in your church, how did you spread the vision for your Judea? Yeah, that was, it was interesting how that happened uh, because I, you know, I read the scripture about writing the vision mm -hmm. and, and I, and without a vision, the people will perish. Yes. And I just thought, I thought about that and I said, okay, God, uh, I, what I want to do is write it down. <laughs> I just want you to give it to me. So I sat down one day and just spent, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half, just writing what I felt God was giving me for a vision of where we wanted to go, what our, what our vision looked like. And it was mostly, <clears throat> it was mostly about Judea, uh, Samaria, the outermost parts of the world are there too. But it was mostly, I would say, about Judea. It was mostly about Lewiston, mm -hmm. Rumford, Oxford. And it was also about uh, in Turner itself, how we were going to operate in Turner. I wrote it down, typed it up, and brought it to, uh, made copies and brought it to the, to the church. And everybody took a copy. And that's something that they pray from. Hmm. They pray from that, that vision that, that mm -hmm. God gave us. Uh, and it's, I've just found it, it was so liberating. Mm. To have something, in other words, we're not just talking about today over here and tomorrow over there. We've got something on paper. We've got something that we can set and we can pray about. It's got substance. And I like that. Wow. 
I like the thought of you you took the verse in Habakkuk 2 2 and you literally did it. <laughs> he, he said right and you wrote. Uh, and in my generation and your generation, we're paper and pen generation. But um, this generation that currently exists, they're not paper and pen people. But I like the practicality and the, the, the organic realization. Okay, he said write it. I'm going to write it. I'm going to pass it out. I think sometimes we try to be too sophisticated. We want to have some pyrotechnics media explosion to present the vision to reach my Judea. And maybe it can be just simple. Maybe I can write it on a piece of paper and pass it out and say, will you pray for this? Yeah. Um, maybe I can also in my messages, I can start referencing my Judea in my messages. I can start making applications that talk about my reference, about the reference of going to my Judea. I can name them in the message. I can pray for them in my public prayers. I can have conversations with people in the church and bring it up. And then also too, Pastor Gordon, I think by example, I think I can go. I can, I can go. I remember, uh, I, there was in, when I was living in Zambia, um, on the, all the way south from the capital city to the largest southern city, there were six cities. So one day me and me and about 12 people jumped into a bus and we just drove. We drove to hit every city between the two cities and we stopped for about an hour, evangelized a little bit got back in the van, went to the next city, just boom, 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 just to stir up the vision. Sometimes we can lead people into it, but also too, we can also go ourselves. I can go and I can come back and say, well, you know what? I went to Rumford yesterday and I really just prayed over the city, over the mill, over the situations there. I just spent time in prayer. And I think our example sometimes can also help motivate people to consider having a vision for Judea. And then also, this is an interesting one, Pastor Gordon. Sometimes I think we can challenge people. Mm. We can just say, hey, you want to go with me? Come go with me. Yeah. Like in Mark chapter four, Jesus told the disciples, just be with me. Come with me, the with principle. Just come with me and let's go look at Rumford. Come with me and let's go to Lewiston. Come with me and let's go to Oxford. Come with me and let, let's, let's go see uh, Portland. Come with me. The come with me principle, because I believe as leaders and missionaries, we can lead people into things as God leads us and they can respond by faith as God leads them. Mm. Yeah. And every place is different, too. That's the, the interesting thing for me has been uh, that they're so different. I mean, really? the way we operate in Lewiston is completely different than how we operate in Rumford and completely different how you know our, our uh, outreach or effort in in oxford so but i just love it i just think it's so we we have to stay connected mm -hmm. to the holy spirit yes for him to lead us in in creativity mm. uh it, it's it's a uh, the way things developed in in lewiston i now have two days a week i have 20 to 25 people that come out these are immigrants from uh, mostly from Africa, African nations. Yay! But uh, but they're they're immigrants and they're learning English, but they uh, but they're hungry for God's word. And it started out uh, teaching English, and then it went from teaching English as a second language. Then they asked me to do an English Bible study, and now it's basically I've gone from from my emphasis is not teaching English anymore. My emphasis is just preaching the word. Wow. Teaching English through that, uh -huh. but the emphasis is teaching the word. And it's just amazing. I had a lady come up to me the other day after uh, after service, after the class, and she said, Pastor Gordon, did you sense the Holy Spirit there today like I did? And I said, uh, I said, Ma I think you met Marby, but yes. I said, Marby, I said, what do you mean by that, Marby? And she said, well, when we were when we were singing and we always sing at the beginning of class, we sing a song. She said, when we were singing, I just felt the presence of the Holy Spirit so strongly. And then she said at the end, when we were just were talking after you got done the class, but we were just all just talking. She said, again, I just felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I just that seems to be the I, I've had I've had several people tell me mm -hmm. I'm not here for the English. I'm here for the word. I'm here for Beautiful. the Bible. I get it. And so that's Lewiston. And I'm in a I'm in a building that I have. All I do is just go there and, and teach. Now, in, in Rumford, it's totally different. I don't have that 
I don't have 20 to 25 people there and we have to rent a building. And we're now in the process, I think on Thursday nights, we're going to do a community community supper and and just really reach out to people and get them to come in for, for supper and, and let it develop through that. Sunday afternoon, we're going to do what we call the gospel sing-along hour and get people to come in and uh, and sing gospel songs, play music. You know, there's, there's, there are people, there are musicians there, Christian musicians, that uh, that would come in to, to be part of that and let it develop that way. Uh, Oxford is totally, de- again, totally different. It's just ministering to a church that uh, that had a need. They just recently have, have uh, appointed a pastor, but they had it for, for probably a year, have had a need for a pastor. And for the, to go there, it's just to go there and, and be with them for, for prayer meeting on Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. Not every Wednesday night, but but fairly regularly and just supporting them, not trying to tell them anything, not trying to give them any advice or anything, just going there and supporting them and appreciating what, uh, you know, what they're going through as elders. So all three places are just so totally different. And yet all three places, so totally effective. You can feel the Holy Spirit working everywhere. Wow. <laughs> well, very few people I know are reaching three towns in their Judea simultaneously. That's a lot. Uh, I'm amazed, actually. I love the way I was recently in Maine. I, I love the way your people are behind you in it. You can tell this is a corporate vision. Yes. Um, you and I have been involved with ministry where there have been times when you kind of feel like it's just you. <laughs> or in many times in, in a mission field, sometimes you start out and it's just you. If you don't have a large team and even in, even in your own home country, you do missions. You may not have a large team. You can feel like it's just you. So it's great when it's a corporate vision, when the vision for Judea is not just personal, but it's corporate. Because in the in the corporate body, there's a lot of encouragement. There's a lot of creativity. Um, there's a lot of ministry that happens corporately. So that's a great challenge for us as missionaries and pastors and Christians is to have be part of a corporate vision for our Judea, like um, Pastor Schaller's vision in Baltimore for Love, Maryland. Mm-hmm. When beyond just living in Baltimore, but being involved in Silver Spring, being involved in Westminster, being involved in Owings Mills, being involved in Edgewood, being involved in Glen Burnie, being involved in Fed Hill, having a vision beyond my Jerusalem. And I want to say this, it's not like you have a vision for your Judea and you ignore your Jerusalem. The way that that verse reads is it's progressively, but it's also simultaneously. In other words, beyond just having a vision for my Jerusalem, I keep my vision for my Jerusalem, and I have a I have a further vision beyond my Jerusalem into my Judea. It kind of progresses out, but it doesn't mean that I I celebrate and I pursue Judea um, at the expense of my Jerusalem. And sometimes you can get so caught up in your Jerusalem, you can't see 10 feet in front of you. You just see your Jerusalem. But I like how you said it. I have the love of God in my heart. I have the Holy Spirit that is shedding the broad, the love of God in my heart in Romans 5, 5. But I also have the Holy Spirit that is leading me beyond what I can see in 2 Corinthians 4, 18 and 19. He's leading me beyond my little Jerusalem. God has plans for me. And I, I want to believe in my heart that God has more for me than just my Jerusalem. And sometimes we get so caught up in building our own little kingdom in our Jerusalem, its own little section of area. Of this is our spot. We have our spot. And how you can have your spot and you can believe God for another spot, too. Mm-hmm. You know, you can believe God for another spot. So let me ask you a question about that. If I'm reaching my Jerusalem, I'm reaching my Judea beyond my Jerusalem. What are some ideas that you've seen or outreaches that you've seen that have been very effective? You've named a few already, like the, the teaching English as a foreign language plan in Lewiston is very creative. Um, the, the the dinners that you're doing in Rumford, that's also very creative. Any other ideas you've thought about, about how to reach my Judea creatively as far as outreaches? Well, uh, I I think you met Lou and Amy, a couple in Lewiston, yes. and they mm-hmm. want to be involved, more involved. There, uh, but they asked me about doing outreach in, in uh, Lewiston, and their idea was to go in the in the uh, tree streets mm-hmm. and 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 just go and take a garbage bag with them, and just go down the street and pick up garbage, 
and mm -hmm. as they meet people just to, because there's there's some there's some garbage there but uh but and then as they meet people just talk to them have tracks and and then try to let that be an initiation into being able to go into homes and visiting people so that's one thing that they can lou and amy came up with uh here in this is not judea but here in jerusalem we came up with the let's mail a letter to the to the people uh turner's very rural okay uh, town and so everybody has a mailbox and uh you may not know what that's like in <laughs> but in in rural towns in maine we have mailboxes yes outside <laughs> by your driveway and everybody has a number so i can go down a street and take the numbers and mail a letter to everybody on that street hmm. so we started doing that and i i do i put together a form letter just telling people that I was the, the new pastor at uh, Turner Village Church and that I wanted to come by and, and meet him and introduce him to my boss. And if they already knew him, then I wanted to just encourage him in their, in their walk and faith. Introduce but, him uh, to your boss, huh? Yeah, yeah, I just <laughs> put that in the letter. But it's amazing, it's amazing, Pastor Ronaldo, what yeah. that did. Because before that, we would go on out on Saturday on outreach and knock on doors mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe you'd get some response, but uh, a lot of times you'd knock on a door and you know, people were there, but they're just not coming. They went to the back room because who the heck is that old guy? And what does he want? What's he <laughs> but by, by putting the, uh, sending a letter, they, and I've had people tell me, Oh yes, I got your letter. You know? <laughs> But uh, but uh, by sending a letter now, when I'm knocking on the door, and uh, they know that oh, it's the new pastor. I'm not going to his church, and I don't care what he has to say. But I at least ought to meet him. <laughs> and so they come to the door, and I it's it's been, I would say from twenty to thirty percent of the people coming to the door to now probably eighty to ninety percent of the people come to the door. Wow! Because you've introduced yourself to him. Yeah, you sent him a letter. Yeah. And it wasn't a bill. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. So, so, so I, I like the. I like that. I guess it, the creativity is as limited as your mind, really, and yes. the Holy Spirit. You know, I like that. Do you do anything like seasonally? Like in certain seasons, you do anything to kind of reach your Judea? I can't. Th I can't think of anything right off the top of my head. No. Okay. Well, like situational. Or like in certain circumstances that have things that happen in Maine that maybe you use to reach people? Well, yes, circumstances for sure. You remember not too long ago we had the the shooting in Lawson. Yes. And and that became a uh that became an event. Uh we became we became known nationwide. Uh and so out of that came uh times at the uh at the uh, the local park. Kennedy Park, which is, by the way, right in the middle of the tree streets. Wow. But uh, but Kennedy Park, we went there, and and all the people that were that were victims were on it, with uh, signs, and then there were services there, and and just people reaching out to each other to to uh, try to, you know, be a comfort and a help in, in a, this time of of trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there are there are situations arise, and we try to respond to the situation yeah hmm. yeah i think sometimes um it's important to, to understand that the the social and political landscape of the area in which we serve um we don't live by the news but we should be aware billy graham used to read seven newspapers whenever he came to a town to preach to find out what is happening in the town what is happening in the area and he would work that into his message. He would want to know, he wanted to be speak of current events within his message to connect with people. And I think in our ability to reach our Judea, we should be sensitive to what is happening in our Judea. Because sometimes you can be so, so focused on building your ministry that you don't understand what's happening around your ministry and to the people that operate in your ministry. You don't know. So that's a great way to pursue it and find out what's going on and then be sensitive to it, you know? Yeah. Well, let me say this, Pastor Ronaldo. So recently, this is kind of a, an odd one, but recently uh, I, I have the people that come to the to the uh, root cellar, which is where we have a English Bible study in Lewiston. They come from from uh, mainly Angola, but we have some from the Democratic Republic of Congo, mm -hmm. 
Republic of Congo, uh, Brazzaville, from, uh, I have some from Rwanda, Burundi, uh, and, and other places. But I, but recently I was looking, uh, I got a thing from uh, the uh, Voice of the Matters, and I just lay, laid it aside and I was here studying, and I had to look up and on the front of it in bold letters, it says Democratic Republic of Congo. And I said, well, maybe I should read this particular one because I know there are people that, that I'm in close contact with that come from there. I read it and it was talked about the uh, the eastern border of the Democratic, Democratic Republic of Congo mm-hmm. and and the uh, the problems that there are there. And it just got me to thinking about, OK, these people have left behind everybody that I come in contact with there at the root cellar have people still in the old country. And so uh, I, I had an Angolan flag, which I bought a few months ago. But I took the Angolan flag, and I've gone from DRC to Angola. But because this was mostly my people are from Angola, I took the Angolan flag, and and I so at class I just I put out the flag, hung up the flag, and they loved it. Mm-hmm. And then we just said, okay, I want everybody here. If you have if you have people still in Angola, if you have family still there, and they all do. I said, I want you to just come and pray. We're going to pray together. And we just took time and prayed for Angola. Now, here I am in Judea praying for the outermost parts of the world. <laughs> and I love it. I just, you know, but it, but it touched them. It touched them that I cared enough uh, to, to uh, be more than just trying to help them learn a new language, yes. but to be invested in them. And I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to every uh, once a week, I'm going to do a, a different country. And I've huh. ordered the flag, so I'm really looking forward to it. It's exciting. <laughs> it sounds like it. Wow, vision produces vision, right? Yeah. What you feed will grow. That's amazing. That's, that's it's interesting that I have a hard time getting my head around Angolans in Maine, but anyway, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what Angolans in, in Maine, but wow, God God puts His people in different places, and it's not by accident, you know. No. Um, one thing I find also too that maybe in your Judea, um, you have opportunities to collaborate with other ministries. Do you have any opportunity to do that? Have you seen that work out at all for you? Yes, uh, I obviously I collaborate with other ministries there at the Root Cell. The Root Cellar is an organization that's set up. They love they love Christ, and I really love the the organization. But their mission is to reach out to the uh, basically to the immigrants that are coming in. Lewiston, for some reason, uh, a number of years ago, had a big Somalian population when when that uh, that all came down. So then I don't know. How did the Angolans get here? I don't know. They all know somebody here now. So, but uh, but but through that, I am connected to the root cellar, which is supported by a number of churches in the area. And so through that, I've gotten to know uh, different people. I. I Gotten to know a missionary, a guy who just came back from Portugal and he wants to go to Ireland, wow. and he teaches there too. Okay. You met him. You yes, met I him. Did. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Ethan Foss. Yeah. Ethan, yes. Yeah. So, so yes. So I'm I'm rubbing shoulders with that. Then in in Oxford, you know, to, I've I've gotten to know the the uh, the guy that's the new pastor there, young guy, uh, and it's just uh, yes. Can we do outreach with them? Yes, we can. We have in Green, you guys, a lot of you know Pastor Scott Jagger. Yes, and and he's uh, he's just such a friend. We've uh, he's he's co-labored with us. He's been to Rumford with us. He's been to uh, he's been to Lewiston. Uh, he wow. comes from, basically his parents come from Lewiston, but but uh, but yeah. So yes, there's a lot of there's a lot of intermingling. Uh, Pastor Larry Shaw. Uh, some of you know uh, Maggie Lockhart. Her mm-hmm. brother Mark Shaw lives in Rumford. Oh wow! He used to have a church in Rumford, the Good News Church. Yes. And uh, and he and my dad were close friends. They used to say that they were the only two pastors in the two Rumford, Mexico, area that could get along. <laughs> but uh, but he's still there. He's uh, he's very he's old now and he's got some issues. But uh, but I work with him closely. And he okay. Prays, mommy calls me work with him in Rumford. Uh, so yeah, there's collaboration with, with a lot of different people. 
do you do you also see the opportunity that I guess in certain areas this would make sense in certain areas it wouldn't like if you're in an area and there's other greater grace churches in the area would you would, do you see the advantage of collaborating with them to reach Judea together we haven't really uh the the other greater grace church, I mean pastor pastor uh Jagat, yeah, Pastor Scott, we've he comes here some and we go there some, but have we done outreach together and that type of thing? Not a lot. Okay. Uh, we need to, it's something that we need to explore more. And then the Oxford Church, I see that as a great opening. And I also, I also there's a pastor in in Rumford named uh, David Terrio, who uh, was in my dad's church a hundred years ago. Well, okay, maybe just ninety eight. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway. But uh, but I've reached out to him. I've spent quite a bit of time with him. He's a, he's a close friend. But uh, but we haven't done a lot together. Um, and I and I don't know. I just I think it's just we have to pray and and let God lead us there. Beautiful. Yeah, I think the whole idea. I mean, in many in many circles, ecumenicalism is a bad word. Um, we feel like um, if someone is not us, it's hard to mix. And even in some cases, someone who is us. We can be very close to each other, but we don't really intermingle. We don't really have the fellowship. And one of the ways that you build regional unity, one of the ways that you have synergy of faith is when two churches that are greater grace or two churches that are that may not necessarily be greater grace co-labor together to know Christ and to make Christ known and to reach an area. You can, you can, you can put up a spiritual hemisphere in a region when churches co collaborate to win the loss and have a ministry on some level more and what usually happens pastor gordon is they'll have the leaders of certain churches gather for prayer or gather for food once a month and that's about as far as it goes the leaders yeah. connect but the churches don't really connect and there really isn't a lot of collaboration to reach the lost in a particular area so one church does what they do and one church does what they do but no one wants to do anything together you know, and it's low key divisive because if we're both in the same Judea, we're in the same area, but we have a, we are, we're individualistic, we don't have a unity. So, how would God honor that? It's not these little individual unities, there's got to be a corporate connection on some level. Yeah, yeah, I will say, uh, last week, I guess maybe the week before, I had a guy, one of the people in my classes came in and brought a guy with him introduced him to me and he said, this is uh, Pastor Augustus. He's a pastor of a local church right around the corner. I don't know where the church is, but, and uh, he said, uh, I wanted you to meet him. And I, 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 I think the guy might be an assistant pastor. I don't think he's a head pastor, but I'm not sure. But I told him, I said, you know, you're welcome to come to class. So he came and, uh, and he, that was the, that actually was the day that we did the, the Angolan flag. When he left that day, he just said, I can't believe this. He said, I just love this so much. Hmm. He says, can I come back again? I said, you, you're welcome to come anytime you want. He said, this was really, just really good for me. So, uh, you know, I don't know. There, there are a number of churches, African churches there in the, in the area that obviously that minister to the African people. Uh, so I don't know. I've, been, I've prayed for a while that there would be a connection. Uh, I can just I can just see some of these pastors, uh, and some of the, the some of the men in the that come to the class, I can just see some of them going to Bible college, and and really getting a hold of the Word of God, hmm. and 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 being able to be used more than that that being used now. Yeah, I, I think sometimes this idea of um, we confuse individual individuality with independence. Like, mm -hmm. okay, you, I'm not trying to make your church my church. And I'm not trying to make my right. church your church. You can be individualistic, but we don't have to be independent in our ministry to the lost yeah. or, to reach a, or to reach a city or to reach my Judea or to reach different areas. There, uh, there, can, be a, there can be a joint effort in some levels. I th and I think unbelievers see that. When, they, when, you, when, you, when your individuality looks like independence, they can sense that. They can sense the disconnection. They can sense the disunity. Well, this church does this, and also all they do, they don't do it with anybody else. This church does this, and it it comes across. 
It says a lot about the character of God, really, in yeah. God's people. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've seen that some in Oxford. Okay. Uh, just because I think when I first went to Oxford, by the way, all of these towns that, that we're talking about, Lewiston, Rumford, Oxford, were towns, areas, cities that had uh, Greater Grace churches in them. My dad was in Lewiston. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the log church in, in uh, and, and uh, my dad was in Rumford, and there was the log church in Lewiston. And the Greater Grace Church in uh, Oxford is still a church, but Rumford is not anymore, and nor is the log church in, in uh, Lewiston. But but the Greater Grace Church, I mean, the church in Oxford is still a church. It's not affiliated exactly with Greater Grace anymore. Okay. But I just, I, but I look at these as as territories that that we want that God wants us to have back. He wants wow. us to take them back in some way. I don't know how it's going to look. I mm -hmm. honestly don't. But uh, but I think about the Oxford, the people there. When I first started going there, I think there was a little bit of a uh, feeling of, I wonder what he wants. I wonder, <laughs> why, I wonder why he's coming here. And But I just kept going. I just kept going mm -hmm. and encouraging him and, and just being there. No advice. No, I just was there to pray with them to, and they even started asking me to share on uh, some nights. And so it went like that. But now I think they, I mean, no, I don't think, I know they trust me. You were there, Pastor. Yes, I was. Pastor uh, Ronaldo. So, you know, but they, I, I mean, they trust me. They, they look at me as a friend and, mm. and they want to have a better, they want to have a closer relationship with our church here. Mm -hmm. Are they ever going to come under a greater grace label? I don't know, and I don't really care. Yeah, you know, it's not real. That's not really the issue with me. Yes. The issue with me are we in brothers in Christ, mm -hmm. and and you know, are we? Can we call labor? Can we call labor? And I think that's the key to the whole thing. I love that. I love how unity, unity and oneness can fuel the vision, and it it doesn't have to be about necessarily labels and connections yeah. and that kind of thing but we can be free to serve god win the loss promote the gospel preach the truth we can be free to do that together without strings necessarily and without so many ties i think that's important i don't think it's such a bad word um i think we can work with a lot of people to win the loss so that's the goal ultimately correct i mean that's the real goal yeah right? absolutely you yeah. said it right, that we win the lost and that we glorify God, right? I mean, that, that's it. Um, to that end, let me ask you a question. That's obviously one. What are some challenges that you think could be there in reaching my Judea? Um, I think I mentioned one already. Maybe you can mention some. Uh, I mentioned to be so narrow-minded about my Jerusalem that I'm building my little kingdom and my little temple and my little people group that I can't think beyond what I'm building. Yeah. I, I would say that in just a little different way. I think my, I, I think the challenge for me is to not think of one place the same as another. In other words, okay, I'm planting a church here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is how I'm doing it because I, this is how I feel God has told me to do it. God's leading us to do it. That doesn't mean that the, the next place I go to that it's going to work the same way. Mm -hmm. I have to be open. I have to be creative. I have to be. Uh, I have to be. I just have to be available to God, to to develop a new plan in a new place, and I think he. I mean, he does it. He's done it for us. I mean, mm -hmm. the differences between the places is amazing. But uh, but I did that in Rumford. I, I, I said, okay, we're going to start with a church. We're going to start with a Bible study and build that into a church. And that's just not the way it's going. I had to back up and just say, okay, God, you show me how it's going to be. And I, and I think that in doing that, I think that we're going to have a strong presence in Rumford, but it's going to be totally different than, than what we're doing in Lewiston or what we're doing in Turner. It's going to, it's going to be different. Hmm. I like that. I, that, that thought you have about that. Um, I can be a problem to reaching my Judea. Yes. Um, yes. Not just in building my own little kingdom, but to your to your expression that I try to build my little kingdom everywhere. 
Mm-hmm. I try to build it the same way that whatever I, I tried to build Judea like I build Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And I, I would have to say that principles can be the same. The message can be the same. Yeah. But the but the expression of all of that and the operation of all that can be very, very different. Very, yeah. very different. As you said, you found to be in, in, in Rumford and Lewiston and Oxford that has been completely different than what you did in Turner. And yet God is in all of it and it's reaching my Judea. I, yeah. I think of another one, challenging challenges to reach in my Judea might just be um, possibly not having my the team or not having the church behind me. That's the real, real reality. Let's say for an instance that uh, my church is small or let's say my church is new believe, mostly new believers. I'm on a mission church and it's new believers in my church or new to the ministry. And then I say, okay, we're going to go reach this other town. They may not be open to that. They might not be as available. That mm-hmm. could be a huge challenge. Yeah, Pastor Ronaldo, you've met some of the people in my, you've met most of the people in our church. And I will tell you, I, I've said recently, we don't seem to grow a lot in numbers, mm-hmm. uh, the church itself. Uh, we've get, we get new people, but then I don't know why we never get beyond 25 or 30. Okay. But, uh, but the people that we have are just so, they, their roots are so deep. Mm. Uh, it's unbelievable to me. We have eight. We have eight people that are taking classes. Only three of us are taking them for credit, but taking Maryland Bible College classes, leadership, and and Pauline epistles. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have people that listen to to the message. I have people that come up to me and say, "Did you hear what Pastor Shala said today?" <laughs> uh, said last Sunday, and uh, and and what about how come we can't find that found the latest foundations class? But these people, they're amazing. They're just amazing. Wow. Well, I think sometimes you're blessed, Pastor Gordon. But I would say sometimes in a new church plant, for instance, um, maybe a church doesn't have as much history as your church has, or maybe with a new foreign country, in the beginning, that could be a serious challenge, trying to give them a vision beyond mm-hmm. the very place where they can see. So I think sometimes we have to be patient. Um, we have to model. We have to lead by example. We have to lead them into it. And it could take some time. I mean, reaching my Judea could take some time, just like reaching my Jerusalem could take some time. Yeah. But I, I think it, it, when people, if you feed it, if you feed it, it'll grow. Yeah. That's the key is feeding it. Yeah. And being creative and spirit led in how I feed it without legislating it, without being legalistic, without driving it, without pushing. But do you, you feed it as God leads, you feed it. If you if you feed as God leads, it grows the way God wants it to grow. Right. Yeah. But if I try to feed it based on how culture leads or how people lead or special books and tactics and I try to feed that way, I'm going to get I'm going to get wild fruit. I'm going to get a wild vine. I'm not going to get God's fruit with my seed. It's got to be God's seed to get God's fruit. Um, Challenges, I think, you mentioned earlier, another challenge you mentioned was the adversity of danger. In many, many cases, um, there's certain reasons why people don't want to go reach certain parts of their Judea. Um, Like you said, if I'm thinking really clearly now, the, the, the population of Rumford is very, very different than, say, the population of Portland, I would say, from my experience. Yes. So, um, so there might be people in Portland that don't want to go to the 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 the, the, um, the tree the three streets. They might it could be too dangerous for me. So that that adversity as far as risk that risk is, is a challenge to reach in my Judea. And in your mind, how do you overcome that? I think the only way we overcome that is through through prayer, number one. But then going, okay, then going. I mean. I, there are people in my church that when I first started going to Lewis and said, wow, that's not a good place to be. <laughs> and now, and now, I mean, very few, but there were a few. But uh, but now they know I go there twice a week. Mm. I go there, I'll go there in the evening. I'll go, it doesn't matter. Wow. And so I think they're be- just beginning to see that, oh, he's going and he's okay. And actually, we bring the people from Lewiston to Turner. 
And, uh, you know, that that's another eye opener for the people here in, in this church. Some of the people that that, oh, we really are. Oh, we're not we're not missionaries to Africa, but God's given us given us Africans to be missionaries to here. <laughs> and uh, it's just I don't know. It's just it's just been a an incredible ride so far. Wow. Uh, it's been so I've been the pastor here just about a year now. And in that year, the things that have happened up. Uh, just, I, I wish I had chronicled them all because they're amazing. Wow. I, I, you just gave me another way that I can reach my Judea. I can take people from my Judea and bring them to my Jerusalem. Because <laughs> yeah. most of the time we think about reaching my Judea, we take Jerusalem people to reach Judea. But also being able to bring those Judean people from outside of my Jerusalem into my Jerusalem, the exposure the, the, the reciprocality of that, where they come and I come and I come and they come, that also promotes me, helping me reach my Judea. Also what happens is my now we become un, inadvertently missionaries. Like we're bringing people in, we're bringing them out. I like that idea because most of us, when we think about reaching our Judea, we reach about going out and starting something out, but we don't necessarily think necessarily about coming and bringing them back into our Jerusalem too. And then you're, then that's where it makes sense that you're building your Jerusalem and you're building your, your Judea simultaneously because there's an exchange of life and there's an exchange of people and there's a connection. And all of a sudden they're part of something bigger than where they can see. You know? Yeah. You know, I saw that pattern in, in Baltimore when I was there a couple okay. of months ago. I, I saw... Uh, like I went to uh, Glen Burnie with Pastor Manny mm -hmm. on a pretty, on a, actually very regular basis all went along. And I saw that, okay, so we're there on Sunday morning in Glen Burnie trying to, to build a planted church and build a church there. But then we're, then we're encouraging those people to come to, uh, to the uh, church in Baltimore on Sunday night, Wednesday night, Bible college classes and so on and so forth. So, I just see, I, I, I don't know. To me, there's a pattern there. Yeah. Uh, that that I see, okay, if I can s somehow follow that pattern in God's creativity, then I'm probably going to be on the right road. <laughs> right source, right course, huh? Yeah. Amen. I love it. Yeah. Um, any uh, other ideas you have about trying to reach my Judea you might want to share with our group today? Any any ideas at all? Anything? Maybe you haven't even tried it yet, but it's crossed your mind. Oh, there's there's a few. I I really want to have a Bible college class in in Lewiston. Okay. Uh, I and I don't know, I don't know how that can come together. I want to have one in Rumford too. Hmm. Uh, I just these the Bible college classes are so incredible. And and uh, I just think the more that that people can hear that, the more that they'll be encouraged and built up. So, so that's uh, that's one thing. Uh, I was just trying to think. I I think community community supper in Rumford, okay, is a challenge, but it's not a challenge. Uh, because it means I got to cook the. But it's easy because because God made crock pots. <laughs> oh, stop right there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get that at this t-shirt. God, God made crock pots. That's just yeah. my answer. For the next 24 hours, my answer to everything is God made crock pots. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but so I can do it, I can do a community supper. Okay. And uh and I could do it by myself, but Will goes with me, so with there's two of us. Uh, on a regular basis, and uh, but so I can do a community supper there and just open the doors and, and invite people in. Uh, I'm going Wednesday, this Wednesday. I'm going there to really start promoting uh, what we're doing there on, on Thursday night and and Sunday afternoon. But uh, I uh, another thing I've thought of here in Turner. This is not my Judea, but in Turner is to have a to have a uh, more of a, uh, an area for the kids to for kids to play. We have a lot of youth, okay, and, and we need an area where they can be comfortable playing, shooting baskets, uh, you know, playing whatever. So, but those are I don't know. Those are things that are down the road. I like that. Uh, so, what exactly happens at a community supper besides you and a crock pot? Well, 
basically it's just getting to know people. That's okay. one of the disadvantages to having the, the uh, class in at the root cellar is that I, I get to talk to the people, but it's on, on, a, on a teacher basis. And so I don't really get to know them, uh, but at a community supper, when they come to a community supper and I can sit down and start talking to them, then I find out, oh yes, I left family. I'm very sad because uh, I have family in Angola and I miss them. And uh, so, so this is the thing I, you know, we have a community supper here. It just builds the body of Christ. And we have community lunch after after church every Sunday, and then the end, the last Saturday of the month, we have a community supper at the church, and it just builds the body of Christ. So, mm. and it draws people. People will come in. People will actually come for a free meal. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, in and so we're going to do that in Rumford, uh, and just invite people in, and then as as we get to know them and, and talk to them, we'll see. I think it's going to I think it's going to develop into. Uh, you know, to having a Bible study there. By the way, we also, another, this is a little different thing, but, you know, we also have tent meetings here in the summer. Oh, say and more our, about that. Oh, the family reunion, the main family reunion. This is the third year we've done it. And we have a tour. We do, by the way, Pastor Stevens grew up about 15 miles from here. Okay. And and I lived in the same town that he did when when I was a child and he was, before he was a pastor. But uh, but so he's in he, his family is in my Judea, and I kind of love that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so we have uh, in August August seventh through eleventh, we're going to have on on that Thursday, we're going to do a tour of Pastor's hometown, uh, Worthley Pond, where where Pastor Stevens received his vision for this worldwide ministry that we're part of, uh, and. And then we have every evening we have a tent meeting, and then on Friday we're gonna I, we're planning to do the Montsuig, go to where the Montsuig original Montsuig church was, mm -hmm. then go to the Woolwich Wiscasset church that was built that he built there, and then go to the Chocolate church where he was for a while, and uh, and then we'll just see. But it's it's kind of just a time to remember our roots. Uh, we we. We don't worship a man, but we do respect what God did in his life. Amen. And it's had a profound effect on us. So so that's that's something that we do in the summer, and people are invited to that. Beautiful. Well, Pastor Gordon, that's about all the time we have for today. That's been been a great program. You've kind of taken us and walked us through Judea. I love that. It's one of the areas there isn't a lot said about it in literature and ministry, about how to reach my Judea. I mean, Jerusalem gets promoted the outermost parts is very romantic and it gets pointed, but the reaching my Judea doesn't really get addressed. You've done a phenomenal job framing that for us today. I appreciate that so much. It's great seeing you again. Um, I, um, I feel like I'm, I'm always talking to you either face to face, online, or on the phone. You're a great friend. Thank you, sir. Thank um, you. It's great to be with you all as well this afternoon. Passion Week, thinking about Christ as he makes his journey towards the cross historically during this week. But also don't forget Tuesdays, Thursday and Friday and Saturday, uh, 7 o'clock, except for Saturday at 2 at 6025 Moravia Park Drive. We have our Easter play here. Come on down and see it. We'd love to have you here. It's called A Stranger on the Road. The Stranger on the Road. God bless you. Until next week, we'll see you again. We will not see you next week because it's Easter Monday, but the following Monday we will. So God bless you. We'll see you then. Enjoy your holiday Easter. Amen. God bless. Thank you, sir.